Hi, this is Frederick from Techno Label Detroit Berlin, and this is a series about Eurorack modules from Duffer in kind of an educational way, but also a little bit entertaining. I will provide some sounds and do some things, not only the bleepy bleep stuff that modular synthesizer are most known for. Now today I'm going to talk about the Dofer A149-1, the 149-1 module and that's a quantized slash stored random voltages module and it consists of two sections, one section with the quantized random voltages and the other one with the stored random voltages. So random voltages are something very familiar in Eurorack, in, with modular synthesizers in general actually. It's the most recognizable sound when people think of modulars, it goes like bleep 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 bleep. So all those bleepy bleep sounds, most of them are random voltages playing random notes. And yeah, that, that's, yeah, it gets tired very quickly. There's so much more where random voltages could be of use. Um, the first thing you do with random voltages is the, yeah, the typical stuff but the deeper you dig into random voltages and especially quantized random voltages because they're quantized they are uh, pitched to uh, octaves or to semitones so they're actually pretty they can be pretty musical and in this episode i will talk about the module from dofer the expansion, the digital random voltages, uh, the A149-2. So yeah, I would say let's jump right into the module. Let's maybe first take away all the cables and let's just go over the modules. So we have the close-up of the module and We've got two CV ins, we got two clock inputs, attenuators for the CV ins and the manual control of what is actually uh, going to be output in those four CV outputs. So they send out uh, control voltages and in the top ones they're quantized, in the bottom ones they're kind of stored random voltages and what this means is um, the first one it will go in octaves so what what this does is it creates these intervals of one octave so you have the base tone and then you have one octave or two or three or four or five octaves above and the range you control it with the manual knob so if you put it all the way up then you got the maximum range so the lowest pitch and the highest pitch will be really far apart if you put it like at two it will be just only one octave apart so that's what's being put out in that top cv out the bottom CV out it's pretty similar but it's not octaves it's semitones so you've got the same range but it's actually there's more steps many more steps but it's still quantized so if you tune your modules well if you send it out to a pitch uh, to an oscillator and you control the pitch of that oscillator when you tune it right the bass note if you tune it right it will stay in tune if the oscillator tracks well so that's the top section 
you can actually modulate this with the CV in and yeah, this is the attenuator. So if you put it like at 100%, like at 10, then the full range of the modulation will actually control the knob as if you would turn it manually. If you put it all the way down, then yeah, no signal is passing through. Uh, yeah, 50%, 50%, etc. So that's just attenuation. I think that's pretty uh, basic stuff. Then the stored random voltages, it does not only go into semitones apart, but actually a quarter of a semitone. So you got like, I think it was 256 uh, steps between the lowest and the highest voltage. The difference between these two, from what I assume, is this one, it's just the whole range. You don't have control I think over it. It's just the whole range and it randomly picks notes. And the lower one you can actually control if it's more like focusing on the lower notes or if it gives a little bit priority to the higher notes. So if you turn it all the way down, you I think it was the lower notes you got plenty of and some higher notes they will uh, get through eventually. If you put it, yeah, 50%, then it's like a, a good mix of the two. And if you put it all the way up, then only the high notes will play and sometimes a low note, but the main focus will be on those higher notes. Before I forget to mention it, the clock input is really important because if you don't feed any clock into the module, it will not work. So if you got the module and you're like scratching your head because nothing moves and you're like, um, why? You need to feed it clock. One thing I think is a little bit of a downside. I would have loved if this clock input would be normalized to this clock input and you will actually just only need one clock to make the module work on all channels. So now you need a multiple and or you need to just feed it to different clocks, which is okay, but should it be normalized? That would have been easier if you're using the same clock. Otherwise, I think this module is brilliant. Um, when I got it first, I also ordered the dual quantizer from Duffer. I was not really sure, although the name suggests it. It would quantize the notes and I might have been a little bit stupid, but yeah, in the end, you can actually do some neat stuff if you combine it with a dual quantizer because you can transpose the quantizer with some voltages and you can actually even yeah, quantize and choose if it's only going to go to the minor or the major scale or if it's going to go to sevens. It's not necessary because those notes are actually quantized. Apart from the lower ones, they could use a little bit more quantization, but I think it still is, it sounds very musical. Um, the module is inspired on the source of uncertainty from Don Buchla. It's not entirely the same, but it, it gets really close. It's got kind of the same flavor, but okay, I would say let's jump in, start patching and yeah, I'm going to send most of the random voltages to the filter cutoff. So it's not only bleepy 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 stuff, but it's actually, it's a nice tone which gets filtered in different um, yeah steps of the filter opening. 
by the quantized voltages. So let me get my headphone. Let me get a clock. So we put the clock in right there. Big difference between the top one and the bottom one is if you put the clock in the top one, you get these digital random voltages, which are actually gate signals. You can use it as gates. So it's just a gate signal and it's pretty random. They all got their, yeah, their, their own um, rhythms, I would say. And you can change those by actually turning the manual knob on that. So if I put it in the lower clock in, only these ones start to blink and the random voltages, they don't work. They only work when you put the clock in the first clock input. So let's see. So these start to work. Then you got the LEDs from the outputs and the lower intensity the LEDs shine, the lower the note or the lower the voltage being outputted, the brighter the light, um, the higher the voltage of the output. So you can kind of see what it's doing. So even without plugging it in, can actually see what what kind of voltages it's sending out being bright high voltages being low in density low voltages so I would say let's start patching I got my matriarch my moc matriarch right here let's Manually control the filter. Nice analog sound, I would say. It's a really nice synthesizer. Really love it. So I'm turning the cutoff all the way down. And let's start by So you can directly hear that it's a few voltages. It's not a wide range, it's a wide range from low to high, but they're really selective. So that's actually, you hear those intervals of one octave. And now it gets more complex because it's going into semitones. Attenuation does nothing until you add like an LFO. What I'm going to do right now. And the LFO closes and opens and that means that the voltages are actually, let's see. So now the range is very small, but every time the LFO opens this knob, the range gets higher and higher voltages are being output. Now let's go to the lower section, let's keep the LFO aside for now and now let's put it here and now there's like all kinds of voltages, way more complex, not as um, quantized as the other ones because now it's like semitones and each semitone can have like a division 
in yeah four divisions so it it's not quantized anymore not in a super musical way at least and if I turn this all the way down the manual knob nothing happens because the output on top is not affected by this knob it's only affecting the knob below so now we have the low cutoff and sometimes a higher cutoff and then back to the low but it's really focused on that low cutoff we turn it all the way up and it's really high and sometimes it will go low but then it goes high again and it's focused on the, the high cutoff and the same applies for the LFO we put the LFO like like this and we make it really go slowly the LFO then it's first focused on the lower frequencies and then it goes higher and higher and higher and then back low like what we're hearing right now it's very low now it's opening up so at the base of the LFO it's going to the low or to the high frequencies Now we're staying in this low end. What is actually really nice and that's because the matriarch has two filters. We can go like a little bit stereo but we need to feed it clock the other one. So So now the filter is working in stereo. One of the two is opening and closing the left one. The other one is opening and closing the right one. So we hear kind of a stereo effect. Like this, let me see. What I like to do is not use the clock like in a normal way. I always, for rhythmical stuff, like to use the clock going through, let's see, that's clocking that, okay. Let's use these triggers. And I'm now using the grids. It's a topographic drum sequencer, which means that there are rhythms programs inside and you can, by tweaking the knobs, go from one rhythm to the other and select rhythms that way. And yeah, it, it sends out triggers, so you can actually use those triggers as kind of a clock not a stable clock not like it stays in time but it's like more in a rhythmical way so that's nice for the quantized voltages to in a rhythmical way control like the filter or such Take away the LFO. Uh, 
and by doing that I also have control over the rhythm in like a, a fluent way so I can turn those knobs up and the rhythm will get like more complex or I can lower it like this and it starts to go really slowly still in time but way slower or select another rhythm and you can use this for like everything that is clocked all sequencers that have a clock input if you clock your grids or your other uh, trigger sequencer for like generating drum patterns then you can actually clock any other sequencer with such kind of a module you can also clock the uh, quantized and stored random voltages with an LFO that's the most basic way of clocking something like that um, I would say let's turn the synthesizer down let's close the filter as much as possible and let's connect the quad ADSR I already connected it to some noise and other kind of oscillator modules with a VCA and then it will go back into the Moog matriarch in the external input um, let's connect these random voltages to the gate inputs from the quad ADSR and let's see and mix the signal so now every time it triggers it triggers the quad ADSR now it triggers all the voices at the same time but the more we plug in it triggers at the time when the digital random voltages gives the gate signal and I can create something rhythmical maybe a little bit weird rhythmical but still and the nice thing is I can control it by actually turning the manual knob on the quantized slash stored random voltages let's turn up the pace So, what I can also do is let me get another patch cord. Let's use maybe these octave intervals and let's connect it to, let's say, precision adder, which goes to some oscillators that are going through the 
matriarch. And now it's pitching the oscillators, all the oscillators, like per octave. And it stays in time, that's nice. Let's connect another one and I'm sending it to the feedback in from the analog delay in the matriarch so the feedback will sometimes like give a lot of feedback and yeah got a very short delay time so get this yeah nice effects. Pretty interesting soundscape bleepy bloop thingy going on, but not maybe not in the typical uh, Eurorack modular kind of way. I hope you like this stuff. It's an interesting module. It's an interesting module, I would say, maybe give it a try if you're in need for something that creates random voltages. I used to use this module a lot for generating uh, bass lines, connecting it to a bass synthesizer or bass voice in my modular. And putting it like pretty um, close the range, not like having too much uh, of an interval, like many octaves of intervals, but only like playing between one octave. And that could create some really exciting bass rhythms, bass uh, sequences, and yeah, I really 
enjoy this module. I don't use it that often because it's nice to sometimes use random voltages, but if you use it like all the time, yeah, to modulate things, but I prefer to sequence stuff over using random voltages. Um, still, it is an incredible module and it's really worth checking out if you in need for something that creates random voltages in a really interesting and precise, accurate way. It's pretty predictable, I would say. In its randomness, there's some, yeah, there's some sense and uh, with a lot of random modules, random voltage generators, most of the time it's really random stuff and uh, yeah, you got those R2D2 sounds out of those modules, but I feel with this one you can do much much more. So yeah, if you like this video Give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I hope to see you, I would say, next episode. Um, I will do another module, maybe if you have some suggestions leave it in the comment section down below and if I have that module or I'm interested in the module for a longer time uh, I might actually purchase the module and review uh, it gives some oversight yeah just leave it in the comment section down below and i will take a look thank you for watching also in the description is a list of all the modules or close to all the modules in this system so yeah please check that out there are affiliate links so in case you buy something even not the things in the list, but if you follow the link and you buy something, the channel gets a little, yeah, support. So I would say that would be really nice. And yeah, hope to see you next time. So good evening, good day or good night. Bye bye.